the first ever uh, video I recorded and put onto YouTube, probably about eight or nine years ago now, uh, was on how to sharpen a cabinet scraper. Um, and I realised in that, in that video, I never actually did talk about uh, how to use a cabinet scraper. So I thought I'd deal with that now, uh, rather late in the day, but there we go. Um, you use a cabinet scraper basically when you've given up on the plane really. Um, you know, you've, you've, set, you've sharpened the plane and you've uh, set it as fine as possible, but still you're getting tear out. Um, and it's then that you want to, re you need to resort to the cabinet scraper or the belt sander perhaps, but uh, I think you'll find the cabinet scraper. I quite like the cabinet scraper because it's a very simple tool, it's just a, a piece of steel, it's just you're on a piece of steel and you're looking to sort of get a nice clean cut with it and it's quite an enjoyable tool to use. Um, a lot of it is just about how you hold the, hold the scraper, so uh, let's have a, have a little look at, um, at, at the grip. I've had a, quite a job trying to get the right camera angle for this bit because I, I, I need to show you how the, how, how the grip works and um, uh, I, I think I probably need a GoPro really, but um, uh, we'll see how we get on with this. Um, now, I'm talking about the grip of the, uh, uh, of the, of the scraper. Um, it doesn't really work scraping like that. You really need to be working away from you so your thumbs can press the, cut of the blade down into the wood to create a shaving. Because what we're looking for is to, is to, is to produce shaving so we get a, a better cut. A shaving indi indicates a good cut. So what we do is we hold the... Um, Hold the blade with the fingers, me pinkies or me little fingers don't get involved here. Uh, so it's me three fingers there down the side of the blade and then my thumbs pressing in at the back. And can you see how the blade is flexed? Yeah, we actually buy a whole blade but we only actually use that bit in the middle really. That's where the shaving is coming from because we're flexing the blade. Can you see that? Um, and the thumbs are pressing the blade down into the, into the work. So that we produce a, a good shaving. You can see we're getting shavings there. Not quite as good as I would hope. Let's see if we see what this edge is like. That's better. So can you see my thumbs are pressing down at the bottom there. Pressing the, the blade down into the wood. And we're getting nice shavings. If we're getting sh uh, dust. There's, there's a little bit of dust there in amongst the shavings. If you're just getting dust. Then... Um, something wrong you, you, you might want to turn over uh, try a different edge there's four edges all together on this on each scraper uh, try a different edge until you're getting a cut um, you could also possibly adjust the angle of presentation that way uh, that might help until you're getting a, a proper cut and if all else fails then you probably need to go back and uh, look at sharpening it um, <clears throat> well in use I like to actually have the back of my knuckle on my, on my ring finger actually rubbing on the surface of the, of, the, of the wood because then that allows me to control the angle I'm present, presenting it at uh, and also the amount of pressure I'm applying. Now it might mean if you've got sensitive skin, it might mean you need a plaster on, the back, on, on your, on your, um, uh, your ring finger to st if you're doing a lot of scraping like on a tabletop or something. The other thing is if you're doing a lot of scraping you can also end up with hot thumbs. So. You need to have a rest occasionally. Um, I've, I'm getting a little bit of juddering happening here. I can feel the, 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 the scraper sort of jumping around a bit as I'm going because this, this is slightly rippled, this wood. Um, it's ripple oak. Um, so I'm actually presenting the... Can you see I'm presenting the... The scraper at an angle, so I'm getting a sort of bit of a gu guillotining cut, which helps to overcome that sort of juddering. <clears throat> um, it, you want to try and avoid cutting in one place. Say I had a, a bit of tear out there, which I wanted to, to deal with. You don't just scrape there, because then that will create, create a depression. Uh, which will become quite evident when, um, when you put the finish on. You know, the, the additional reflection off the finish will highlight that uh, depression, which is a bit depressing. Uh, so you need to sort of spread the cut around so you're distributing the, the sort of contour a little bit more. So that sort of uh, 
dip is more hidden. <clears throat> um, then the other thing is, it doesn't really work. Scrape, I've, I've changed my position so I can demonstrate this. It doesn't really work scraping across the grain. Uh, certainly not. Certainly not straight across the grain. Uh, there, are, <coughs> there are situations where you have to sort of scrape on the diagonal, which I'll talk about later on. Um, but generally, you want to be scraping with the grain like that. Um, I'm going to carry on a bit because I'm quite enjoying this. Actually. It's quite nice with the, to scrape this, this oak. Um, but I will actually change the camera angle uh, to from different directions so you can see more about sort of the way I'm presenting the scraper to the wood, which is quite important. Hopefully you can see the angle I'm working at is something between, I don't know, it's around about 30 degrees, a bit below 30 degrees perhaps. We're still getting lovely shavings here. This is a piece of uh, ripple, ripple oak, which I've had lying around the workshop for well, about 100 years, I think. Came in a batch of ordinary, it's American, uh, came in a batch of ordinary, a crown cut American oak. Um, I couldn't really use it because it was so different to all the other bits and it's just sort of hung around since then. Uh, extraordinarily dense, so it's quite hard to claim. I'm actually angling slightly because it's a bit more rippled here, so if I go there, it's going to, I can feel it jumping around a bit. If I angle it, get more of a slicing, guillotining action, it's better. Well, that's a good edge, that one, yeah. Funny, some... Some burrs, you know, just it's a sort of like a sweet spot. So you can see, I'm, I'm see how much I'm flexing, flexing with the curve in the in the uh, scraper as I'm flexing it with my thumbs. Um, well, one of the things the cabinet scraper is good for is it is actually cutting back inlay. So I've got some ebony string in here in this uh, in this table. This is from a table from my after schools uh, course. And um, usually when you put in this, this inlay in, you leave it standing slightly proud, uh, just so you can cut it back level to the, to the wood. Um, and you're okay when, you when you're working here, because you're, you're working with the grain. But as you come across here, uh, it's not a good idea, you know, you really need to be working with the grain, but the problem is then you're scraping across the, the string in, and you probably get tear, you know, the, the finish on the, on the, on the inlay won't be, won't be terribly good. So in that situation, you just have to compromise and you'd, you'd, you'd scrape on the diagonal like that. Um, and then you probably have to do a little bit of uh, uh, sanding. Well, you're going to have to do a bit of sanding anyway, but um, the sanding might be more required on, uh, in that area. Um, certainly I wouldn't, I wouldn't, wouldn't scrape like that to follow the line of the inlay. And I won't scrape like that to follow the line of the grain, so you're just having to compromise. I hope you found those few tips on uh, using the cabinet scraper useful. It can be a difficult tool to get the hang of, uh, but once you've, once you've mastered this idea of the tension and getting the right angle, uh, then it's, it's rather a lovely tool to use, actually, as, as you can see, I'm a bit in love with my scraper. <laughs> um, obviously, having it nice and sharp is quite important, so... Um, uh, it might be worth just having a look at that, uh, that video I mentioned uh, at the beginning. It is still around on YouTube and um, uh, it will help you to sort of get a good keen burr on, the, on your scraper. Um, if you're interested in, uh, in getting notifications when uh, new videos come up and that sort of thing, uh, you can subscribe to my channel. There is a subscribe button somewhere around here. Um, <clears throat> anyway, if you have been, thanks for watching.